For this show, we decided to focus on the last five years of Sam's life. That begins in 2018 when these drapes were created for the Art Basel Unlimited presentation. That's the same time that he's having his massive solo exhibition at the Kunstmuseum Basel, which is a huge moment for Sam in his career. So that seemed like a good moment to kind of hone in on as this final chapter of Sam's life and career. Sam in that show was engaging with a lot of those works that he hadn't seen or engaged with in, in years. And in some ways maybe was able to move on from those works. It just gave him maybe a boost that he needed and also lit a fire for him in terms of getting recognition for his new work. He was really committed to his practice and I, I don't think he was satisfied to um, rest on the laurels of that show. He grabbed that momentum and went, went with it. We've been working on this show for a little over two years and it's a two-part show. The first part was in New York and the second part is here now in Los Angeles. It's a total celebration of Sam and all three galleries. In this gallery we have the drape paintings. Just outside the room you and I can see a peek of the sawhorse work and the carpenter too. Beyond that we have the gallery of the Tondo paintings and in the west gallery are Sam's watercolors. What I like about this presentation is that the different bodies of work are presented separately, right? So you are moving from one room to another. I think it allows for a, a level of appreciation and a, a level of immersion in a particular body of work when they're separated. In the studio, the atmosphere was an, an intense excitement. There was a lot of pressure to deliver. Um, everyone in the studio uh, the last five years was aware of you know, Sam's genius, the level of excellence that he expected. They admired him. The Tondos are a really good example where um, there are these snippets. They're like tiny windows into the atmosphere of the studio of that time. And I think when you look at them, you feel that energy that Sam had and he took it seriously. He wanted to get a new body of work out. He wanted to prove to himself and everyone, you know, that he could do it, that he was still uh, vibrant, that he was still thinking, because he was. He was engaged, he was funny, he was active, and he was thinking in, a, like in innovative ways, in new ways. Sam is famously known as the artist who freed paintings from the stretcher bars. With the drape paintings, I think two things happen. One, he blurs the line between sculpture and painting in an incredible way that we can kind of never go back from. And the other is that he really takes seriously the role of the canvas in painting, that he realizes there's this whole other character in the room that isn't really being engaged. When I think about the scope of, you know, Sam's work throughout his entire career, I think about, you know, my own first interaction with Sam's work. I was blown away by not just the color, but I think in terms of the risk that's involved from completely removing the frame, and being willing to interact with the wall, with, with space, with the body in that way. Encountering his work now as an adult, I was humbled by Sam's ability to challenge us as a viewer uh, through different bodies of work. What is interesting to me about the drape paintings in relation to something like the Tondos, for example, is even though they seem quite different, they're both very immersive. And I see them as being immersive because I'm constantly thinking about my body in relation to the works. I'm constantly curious about what's happening, Sam's process. There's this constant like building up um, of paint. So for me, they're not sculpture, they're not painting, they're, they're something else. I can't quite put my finger on how I describe them other than saying that they're like this truly kind of immersive experience. Sam had a, an experimental moment. I mean, he was always pushing, always experimenting, always playing in the studio. And um, there's a lot of paint built up around the canvases that he had been working on. And um, he took some of the circular structures that he had designed and intended to paint and dropped them on top of the paint, you know, pressing them down, had people stepping on them. And then on the paint that was kind of like on the pooling paint that was all in over the, the studio. Floor, yeah, pulling in the studio and then lifted them up to reveal what was left and then began to work with that. I think you see 60 years of paintings packed into every single one of those paintings. You see moves that he was making from the very beginning of his career to the very end. 
this set of tondos, he having that experience came in with a very clear vision. Like I want a red one, I want a blue one, I want white ones. And uh, we kind of went from there with those intentions and, and what he wanted. It's actually the final paintings that he made um, in his life. Sam was making watercolors from the very beginning of his career. They were always an essential part of his practice. He's making them at the same time as paintings on canvas, and they're just as important to him as the paintings on canvas. They're not studies, they're complete artworks unto themselves. And importantly, the very first sort of like major signature mark of his is discovered with works on paper. It's with the watercolors when he first begins his folded, crumpled, poured techniques. In seeing the drapes and the tondos, and specifically the tondos in relationship to the watercolors, noting the incision that comes across each of the tondos, creating those um, hard quadrants, it was the first time that I kind of made the connection in his watercolors too, of how interesting it is that the moment that he leaps out of the color school by making these vibrant color pouring over each other and spilling across each other and making this whole jubilee of color, that his innovation in that and his kind of first signature Gilliam move is that he institutes a hard edge into those watercolors with the, with the folds. The watercolors, the lines are from a structure that allows for experimentation. It creates experimentation within the work. You can think about jazz in that way where it's like a mastery of kind of knowing how to set something up so that you can appreciate the materials themselves and how they're interacting with each other. Are there other genres that involve just as much improvisation or just as much experimentation, but also require a huge amount of structure that do requirement of discipline? And I immediately thought about poetry as something that could, that maybe hasn't been explored as much in his work, that maybe should be. Sam has made bodies of work that you could see build on one another, that we'll have an opportunity to kind of tease out this idea of structure and intentionality and like all of these things that maybe haven't been explored as much. I am inspired by a commitment to a way of working, you know, a commitment, in Sam's case, a commitment to abstraction and a commitment to pushing oneself throughout their career, a commitment to color, a commitment to that it's okay to take risks within a certain language. Like, you know, Sam inaugurated a conversation, you know, years and years ago that it still feels very resonant and strong and needed today. And so I hope that young artists, older artists, you know, uh, people who are not familiar with Sam's work, I think walk away with this, the commitment to abstraction that I think points to the fact that it's, it's limitless. And so I'm hoping that people see that our understanding of Sam's work has really rolly begun. I think he had a lot a lot of commentary on things that were not just beautiful. He had lived this life where he was born in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi in 1933. He had a lot more to say with his paintings than just like, this is a beautiful object. Because he was talking about freedom and he was talking about expression and he was talking about a commitment to abstract art, experimentation. There was this thing that he said to me once that it's not about making something new, it's about making something your own. Even though he was this like, relentless innovator, he was trying to make things his own. You know, he was finding his own way in the studio and in the world, and this was the way that he did it. This was the form, and we're, we are privileged and lucky enough to be able to experience that. You know, not everyone is as generous with their experiences as Sam was.